YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back with another episode of Terrible Take Tuesday, taking a look at some of the terrible takes around the NFL sent in by you guys. If you want to send some in for next week, you go to our Twitter. There's a link down below. Uh, you can tweet at me or DM me a terrible take that you find uh, around maybe the internet or from TV, and then we break it down. We got 50K subscribers now here on the main channel. Really appreciate the support. Let's reach that next goal, maybe 100K a, week, uh, a year for now, I should say. And then uh, please subscribe to our second channel there. More coming to that in the future. And there's our Twitter on the screen. Again, any link that you need down below, including our podcast. Uh, but the first terrible take, uh, I had to find myself here. I, uh, I kind of was talking about this on Twitter as well. But Gil Brandt tweeted out the best offensive lines uh, for this year. And these are the ones that came up, came to mind for him. And having the Rams in there is just pretty questionable, pretty terrible, I might add. You know, I, I think you can argue that the Rams have one of the worst offense lines in football. You know, when they made that Super Bowl run, it was one of the better ones. But seeing some guys aging, they got rid of some guys. You know, they dropped their center, Sullivan. Uh, and they kind of want the younger mid-round picks to step up. Last year, you know, Whitworth not really playing, still solid, not really playing the same as he did a few years ago. But that's kind of their strong point, really only strong point. And there was a lot of struggle last year. I think that was the main reason. We saw Goff take a slide down, but I think it was more of the offensive line kind of letting him down, letting the running game down too. Todd Gurley, you know, made it tough for him. So, I, you know, maybe we've seen all the time offense lines go from first to worst, worst to first. So maybe they can just step up. Maybe some of these guys just hit their potential. They developed. They, they you know, they kind of – they're kind of getting used to playing now because only some of those guys only had one year. So maybe they pick it up. I just don't see them anywhere near the top. Uh, the rest of them are pretty obvious. Uh, the Saints made some changes, obviously, uh, bringing in Cesar Ruiz. So see if they can adjust there. But understandable why they're at the top. Same with the Raiders. Uh, you know, but uh, you know you can understand why those are at the top. But uh, yeah, I would I would 100% agree with the Niners, Colts, and Cowboys uh, towards the top here. Uh, but a questionable decision from Gil Prant there to put the Rams up there. Uh, next up, this one is for at Dice Havoc uh, on Twitter. He sent this, it looks like an Instagram post, FR, not sure what that stands for, but that's the Instagram account. And uh, so we got tiers of receivers, basically. Very cool graphic they made. Tiers of receivers. <clears throat> and throughout this whole thing, you kind of can pick out, you know, what you would think is wrong, what you can argue. Pretty easy to argue a lot of these things. Uh, but what I'm going to say is terrible is at the bottom there, high-quality receiver twos. High qu so receiver twos is the label. Even though it's high-quality, they're still given the label receiver twos. And, I mean, you can, yeah, again, you cannot, you can maybe disagree with uh, pretty much every single one. You're know, looking at Cooper Cup, Jarvis Landry, you know, but maybe better than the label receiver two. But what I think is absolutely terrible is Juju Smith-Schuster uh, and Tyler Lockett, those two guys labeled as receiver twos. Those are... Receiver ones to me is kind of an understatement for those guys. I think they're more than receiver ones. So to call those guys receiver twos, you know, the Steelers got a pretty good unit, but clearly Juju Smith-Schuster is that star of that unit, that leader of that unit. Tyler Lockett has DK Metcalf now, and I think both of them are receiver ones. And they're that good. DK Metcalf maybe on his way. Maybe not ready to say it yet. On his way. Well, he's not on the list, so their best receiver is a receiver two in Tyler Lockett. Uh, that is pretty questionable there. So uh, definitely a very interesting one uh, with this receiver tier rankings. Uh, next we got from Christopher Hughes at Midwest Sports 12. Projected landing spots. This is by CBS. So pretty big uh, you know, sports analyst here. Uh, CBS Sports. Uh, projected landing spots for top remaining free agents in the NFL. And it's pretty cool. They have the contract predictions too. So that's kind of hard to do. Pretty cool. Uh, and we go through these. Jadavion Clowney to the Titans. You know, makes sense. That price point makes sense. Jason Peters to the, the Broncos. I'd say it's not likely, but okay. Uh, you know, definitely could see it. Everson Griffin to the Browns. You know, the Browns failed to hit on uh, Clowney when they tried to. So Griffin kind of makes sense. LaShawn McCoy back to Philly kind of makes sense. Freeman, I, I don't really see that one. I don't know if it's terrible, but I don't really see that to the Niners. Uh, Denard, uh, remember who he thought signed, but now back free agent, uh, could go to the Bills. And the Vikings, you know, drafted enough corners, uh, but they could go Logan Ryan to play the slot. Very possible. Eric Reed to join his brother Justin Reed in the Houston Texans. Possible. But back to the top left there, Cam Newton, I, I just don't see that. I, I don't 
so many things are wrong about this, I think. You know, first, I think the Cardinals are kind of set with what fits for them. Kyler Murray, Brett Hundley, they're pretty set with that, with their one-two. I think they're good. You know, I don't know if they're going to spend unnecessary money or bring in unnecessary backup, you know, if it's for a starter role, obviously, but not the case. Uh, yeah, so I just do not see them signing Cam Newton. I also don't see Cam Newton going to go for a th- one-year $3 million going to sit on the bench, uh, you know, guaranteed to sit on the bench for a young Kyler Murray, you know, who you expect to just keep playing no matter what. Uh, I just don't, for both sides, it just does, I'm surprised they came up with that Cam Newton and the Cardinals one there. Um, so, yeah, that, that was kind of out there. The rest of them are pretty realistic for the most part. Um, like Clowney, I still expect to be on the Titans, so that's a pretty good prediction. You got one year, $16.5 million, pretty good deal for both sides. Um, so we'll see. Next, we got every NFL team's best defensive player sent by Keegan Jones at Keegan Jones. And if we want to get like a follow train going with all these, everyone follows these people. If you end up on here, you'll get some follows back. I mean, up to you, obviously, but that'd be pretty cool if we can kind of start something like that. Uh, but this looks like, what is that, stat, stat loading? Uh, could be an Instagram account there. Every NFL team's best defensive player, very cool graphic, good idea here. Uh, and the person that sent it to me, Keegan Jones, kind of um, – you know, boxed the ones that he thought were terrible there. And, yeah, starting at the top, you know, Frank Clark for the Chiefs is a pretty darn good player, Frank Clark, that is. Uh, but I don't know how you just don't go Chris Jones. I, You know, to me, Chris Jones is – I call him elite. Not everybody will. I call him elite. I think he's that good and a player on the rise. I think he's the second-best defense lineman in football after Aaron Donald. I think that's pretty clear-cut as well. Uh, so I don't want to take away from Frank Clark, but I just don't see how anybody can say that Chris Jones is not the Chiefs' best defensive player because I think he's one of the best defensive players in all of football. Uh, and then kind of skimming through the well, the other one they boxed out, Carlos Dunlap. I don't think that's terrible enough for the Bengals. Um, yeah, you could argue uh, Geno Atkins. You know, I, If it was, say, it's before last year, then this would be pretty terrible. But Geno Atkins maybe taking a step down. I would still probably say Geno Atkins or maybe Jesse Bates. Uh, but it's not, I don't know if it's super terrible with Dunlap. The other one they boxed, yeah, the Packers, Preston Smith. Zedaria Smith, to me, is much better. Uh, the stats will show pretty even. Zedaria Smith, if you watch, if you actually watch, Zedaria Smith is much better than Preston Smith. Uh, and and I, I would also put Kenny Clark uh, ahead of Preston Smith. I would also put Jay Alexander ahead of Preston Smith. I would even probably put Adrian Amos uh, ahead of Preston Smith as well. Uh, but Zedaria Smith would be my choice and Kenny Clark close second. Uh, then... Uh, I don't have a problem with Dante Fowler really too much. Grady, it's, it's tough to put him over Grady Jarrett, I guess. But Fowler, you know, being a pass rusher, pretty productive one. You know how important pass rush is. It, you know, it's I would definitely choose Grady Jarrett, but I don't know if it's super terrible. Uh, some people would probably think it would be. Uh, I don't really have a problem with Jalen Smith for the Cowboys. You know, I think most people would say Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence, very good player. I think he's a little on the over, overrated side, if I'm being honest. I think Jalen Smith's an okay option there. The Giants go Blake Martinez. That's pretty bad because he's a guy that struggled recently. He's a new face for the Giants, uh, and they got you know Leonard Williams. I even think Dexter Lawrence in the second year. I think a couple of those defensive linemen, um, you know, will stand out over Blake Martinez there. So that's that's definitely an interesting one. Uh, so other ones, you know, if there's any other ones in here, I'm trying to look real quick. Um, yeah, the Buccaneers, I mean, you could go I, – I would go Levante David for the Buccaneers, um, trying to look through the rest of these. Uh, interesting, the Redskins get a, a rookie in Chase Young. I think I think it's very realistic, actually. Um, looking through – yeah, the rest of them seem okay in the, at first glance here. And, yeah, uh, you see the Ravens go more than Humphrey. That's – it's, you can argue that, but uh, yeah, the rest of them seem like okay, but there, yeah, there's some definitely some questionable ones there. And moving on to the next one, though, we got from Trevor Kinney at Trevor uh, LV31. Five most overrated teams in the NFL uh, by Laces on Leather. You got the Niners at one, you got the Bucks at two, Eagles at three, Vikings and Colts. Interesting. I don't know, if, you know, people ask me overrated teams. I mean, I definitely could pick some, but it's tough. I don't know if anybody's really that overrated or anything. I don't know how you could put the Niners in here. There are some people, you know, especially at number one, there are some people saying the Niners just don't play as good as last year. And I can understand, even though I, I don't know if I'm, I'm not saying I necessarily agree, I can understand that prediction. You know, last year, easier schedule. You know, they're not playing the first place schedule, even though it's not extremely hard. 
Um, they're a team you worry about the health a little bit. So maybe you're predicting them just have a harder schedule, the division's harder, or they can get beat up a little bit, and it's just hard to repeat in general no matter who you are. I can understand that. But I, I, you can't really call them overrated. This is a well-built team, a well, very well-round roster here, um, some top-tier talent. Uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's a team that just went to the Super Bowl. It's tough, a team fresh off that, to call them actually overrated. I understand if you think people, if you want to say people are predicting to go too far just because of last year. I can understand that. I just don't think you can call them overrated. I, you know, and again, overrated doesn't mean bad or anything. It's just, it's overrated. You know, some people take that the wrong way. Uh, I, I just don't think you could. Be, anybody can be in a position to call them overrated, especially number one. Buccaneers, I don't think they're overrated, but I understand it. Yeah, people people kind of get mad about the hype. I, you know, I can understand it. The Eagles, I can see it too. Uh, Eagles is kind of one I kind of can agree with. Um, it's weird. I kind of can agree with it, but I also – let me kind of backtrack. I think you know, the last few years, the Eagles, because they won a Super Bowl that one year um, – and we're impressed with the coaching, some talent. People always say this is Super Bowl favorite. I think most of, you know, ESPN, you know, those people kind of predict the Eagles to be the NFC team last year. And I was kind of like, it's just not the same team right now. You do worry about the health. So I thought they were kind of overrated. But then now, I think we're pretty split. I think I think about 50% of the world, nobody has the Eagles just right, in my opinion. I think 50% of the world, the football world kind of thinks the Eagles are Super Bowl contenders, top tier NFC Super Bowl contenders. I think the other 50% are okay. They may squeeze into the playoffs because the division sucks. They may win nine games again. Maybe they miss the playoffs. They were lucky to be in last year. I think they're in the middle of both of those. So, in a way, you can call them overrated to some people. In a way, you can call them underrated to other people. I think they probably play better. Actually, I think they probably play better than most of the world thinks this year. I'd, I'd actually say. Um, you know, given that a good chunk of those people that say they're definitely zero contenders are Eagles fans, so maybe that doesn't really count. So yeah, may, I, so I don't know if I could agree. Actually, the more I talk about it, I, I think they might play better, a little better than most people think. But last year they were getting all the Super Bowl talk, and I knew that it just wasn't happening last year. There's no way. The uh, Vikings at four. I don't. I don't know anybody that that really praises the Vikings that much. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's it's a weird team. Because you could say maybe they won't be as good as last year, and some people may think they'll be good as last year, but I don't think it was anything crazy where these people are like, this is a dominant team. I, I just, if anything, I, I, well, I think mainly it's Kirk Cousins that gets ripped a lot, but I, I don't see anybody overhyping this team at all. Uh, the Colts, I think it's more of Phillip Rivers. I think, I think he could play better than last year, but I think people are going too much that, yeah, they got better at quarterback, he's got a good offense line, so they're guaranteed to be a whole lot better. I think they'll be better. They can actually get into playoffs because of it. Um, some people are kind of thinking AFC Championship. I, it's, it's a little tough, I, I, you know, so maybe a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I, the Niners and the Vikings being overrated is, is questionable, very questionable, mainly because I don't think anybody's in a position to say the Niners are overrated. And I, don't think any, I don't think anybody is – I haven't heard anybody hype up the Vikings. Uh, you know, I don't know if the Vikings fans even maybe they believe a little more than other people. But I don't, there's nobody out there saying that they're this great team. You know, so maybe I'm wrong on that, but I'm just not hearing that. Uh, next, we got from Seth Mizell at Seth Mizell. A lot of people sent me this. This is the first one I saw, so I apologize if I didn't use you. It was uh, so ESPN basically did pretty cool actually. They did a re the NFL starts new. Everybody is in the draft pool. We redraft here. In same order, it looks like from this past NFL draft. What would it be the order? And there's a lot of. I, I don't know where they came up with this, honestly. <laughs> there's a lot of. It's a very cool exercise, I guess. But a lot of questionable ones here. Um, I mean, first, uh, Ronnie Stanley is one of the better tackles in football, and he's definitely one that's improving. He could, at the end of this year, he very well can be considered the very best tackle in football. I don't know if he. Uh, that, and tackle is very important. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know if they get take, he gets taken sixth. To the charter. I mean, we can ignore the team, I think, itself. It's just who goes where uh, because everyone has zero players at this point. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know if Stanley goes six. Then you got Joey Bosa coming off the board seven. Joey Bosa, a fantastic pass rusher. Um, I don't know if he's quite lived up to the hype yet. You know, almost looked like Nick Bosa already outplayed him in one year. Uh, I Just to me, Joey Bosa is not the seventh overall player. Uh, in, in the you know a fresh draft to me I just don't see it. Uh, the Drew Brees one to Arizona it kind of brings up the question of you would think if you're redrafting you're thinking about the future, you know you're you're definitely thinking that's what they in the normal draft that's what people do you think about the potential you think about the future how how many years will this guy give us of good play? Uh, Drew Brees doesn't have much longer so for that reason I don't think he would be the eighth pick at all. 
but you can make the case maybe they weren't thinking like that. Maybe it's for one season, which I would kind of question that um, you know way of doing this. But so Drew Brees at eight for that reason doesn't make much sense. Uh, I think Wentz a little early because the injury concern and Rodgers the same thing for Brees, same reason for Brees there. See Dax up at nine because he's still younger. You know for his age he's pretty far along in what he's proved and what he's de- and where he's developed. Um, so that makes sense for in terms of future and kind of proven. So they kind of contradict themselves I think a little bit with this. I like Joe Burrow at thirteen that early. I like Joe Burrow that much. Drew Locke I might be higher on Drew Locke than anybody that since pre-draft. Uh, maybe not this system, whatever was used to make this, uh, because I wouldn't. I don't think he's 15th overall. You know, again, I believe in Drew Locke, 15th overall. Questionable. Matt Ryan brings up the debate on is this for future. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, another one. I, I'm a bigger fan of Teddy Bridgewater maybe than anybody. Uh, I think the injury question, the lack of reps after the injury, even though he went six and zero on the Saints. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I think it's a little too early. Garoppolo might be a little early. Baker might be a little early. Darnold's definitely too early. He's got potential, but, uh, I mean, too many turnovers. Cole Mack's tough because I think he's the best defensive player in football, uh, but he's a little older than some of the other ones, so that's a tough one. So, you know, his talents, I would say, much earlier in this, but, yeah, so they kind of kind of go back and forth. This is for future right now. Uh, Minnesota taking Ryan Tannehill is pretty interesting, you know. Uh, maybe a little early for Tannehill, not, not enough proven. Uh, it's interesting, I, know I don't really pay attention to the teams, but how much they believe in Kirk Cousins, how much money they give him, and they got him taking Tannehill over Cousins or even Stafford and a younger quarterback. So it's a pretty interesting one. Uh, yeah, I really don't know about Stafford at 28 either, though, because the injury concern, kind of aging, not like he's super old or anything. Tua, same thing, you know, question, still a lot of questions, especially with the injury. Uh, but the rest of them I pretty much agree with, but there's a lot that I didn't agree with there. So that's that's I like what they did there. It's very interesting how they did that. Uh, but pretty questionable. Uh, next, we got uh, from Xander, Xander8524, uh, quarterback rankings. Uh, in this NFL scouting did a whole um, you know, full ranking, so if you want to go see the rest of theirs, you can go uh, to their Instagram. Uh, but this section right here really stood out to me, uh, really stood out. I mean, even Ryan Tannehill, but my point was Sam Darnold ahead of – Sam Darnold ahead of Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins – Ben Roethlisberger, Tom Brady. You know, mainly what stands out is Tom Brady, maybe number one, Matt Ryan, number two, and then Kirk Cousins, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, those guys, but again, mainly Brady and Ryan behind Sam Darnold. Maybe even Tannehill's bad enough, but it's behind Sam Darnold. And on top of that, Sam Darnold being ranked 12, kind of questionable. Again, I haven't really been, the even since pre-draft, I haven't been a Sam Darnold guy. I've never doubted the man's future, though. He's kind of that raw prospect, has the upside. But he's proven to me he's going to turn the ball over in some pretty interesting situations, you know, some pretty bad situations, especially, you know, I don't know if it's helping to develop him, development what's around him and then Gase around him. Um, so I just don't know how Darnold could be that high. I also, the main part, ahead of guys like Brady, Brady, Ryan, Cousins, Roethlisberger. I mean, you can even argue some other guys below him, but that, that's really stood out. So that this was pretty terrible in my opinion. Um, and then next up we got... Uh, from Jacoby1624, same handle there. Uh, Nate Burleson has the Titans as the best offensive trio in the NFL. So he has Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown. So quarterback, running back, receiver, trio. I actually did a recent video like that with those rankings, with that same exact trio, like version of trios. And I also did other trios, duos, more to come on that. So you can check those out. I have the Titans top 10, but having them as the best is Bold, beyond bold. Um, I like you know, Tannehill. I'm not. I'm a believer, even though I want to see more. I'm a believer. Derrick Henry. I was very, very high on him uh, coming out of Alabama, while most people were not. Uh, in terms of you know, I mean, people had him second round, so I guess that's pretty high. But I had him top of the draft actually, and he's kind of proven that that he's that good. So I'm a fan. Uh, and AJ Brown, I was uh, I was an early first round grade for him as well. He goes second. He's but he was I picked him for rookie of the year. I thought he was the most dominant rookie last year offensively. Um, so I like this trio. I like this trio a lot. It is in no way the best um, in, in football though. You know, I I guess he could be thinking. 
He could be thinking the Titans just continue that run because who is the hottest team in football? I mean, the Chiefs won a Super Bowl, so you have to say the Chiefs. But down the stretch of the season, the Titans were, and it was because that big three mainly. I mean, they have other good pieces, a well-built team. So maybe Burleson's looking ahead. They stay hot. They're just that really good team. They're still improving because there's a lot of new faces. And then by the end of the year, this ends up being the best trio. So maybe it's not – I'd say there's a shot, but it's, it's a pretty damn bold, I'd say. Uh, and then poor uh, CTB keeps making it on um, Terrible Take Tuesday here. I believe they're an Instagram account, CTB. And I got to, I gotta, you know, they do. They got to do a lot of good work, a hard work over there. And, you know, the, the, I love these graphics too. Um, you know, I know a thing or two about the, the, you know, graphic design. And these, these graphics are very cool. So I don't want to completely rip them. They keep coming up on, people keep sending me CTB stuff and they keep making the cut. So they do some good work, but they, they are deserving to make the cut for Terrible Take, take Tuesday, let me tell you. Um, so elite cornerback sent by PandaKiller99 at PandaKiller991. Uh, elite cornerbacks, I just don't know how James Bradbury is an elite cornerback. I mean, the Giants, I guess, paid him like one. Um, he, kind of an under-the-radar guy, has been impressive because of that. You know, smaller school, um, you know, came on. It wasn't expected to be anything special, so he played – Better than expected. Very impressive. He's growing. He's improving. That's impressive. Last year, career year, pretty impressive. You know, he's on his way maybe. Uh, first half of the year, looked like looked like a top 10 corner, honestly. I don't know if top 10's elite, though. First half of the year, Rivera's gone. Everything kind of goes downhill. He doesn't really look the same. It's very, very tough to call him elite right now. So I would not agree with that. I would also not agree with Marshawn. I know a lot of people like Marshawn Latimer. Um, I think he's overhyped a bit. You know, he seems to start... First five games of the year look like a top five corner, then completely downhill from there. I don't know if minor injuries play a part. Sometimes they do. So I would not call him elite. You know, Fuller's been pretty good. Turn around his career, I would not call him elite. I would not call – I mean, Jair Alexander's on his way to being elite. I don't. I wouldn't call him elite yet. Xavier Howard has elite potential. I love the idea of how – I think he can – really, what I've seen, even out of Baylor, I was high on him. Uh, I, I think he can be an elite corner. We just need to see more of him. Uh Darius Slay kind of aging, needs to stay on the field. It's tough to say. You know, I you know, I don't want to rip the rest of these. But, yeah, some of those, like James Bradbury, Lattimore, I just don't agree with Laban Elite. And then the last one is, yeah, you guessed it, CTB again. This one is pretty bad uh, because this is the bottom of the pyramid, so the bottom tier of safeties. This is safeties. Uh, the very bottom tier that they have and I mean, I you could I mean, Malik Hooker needs to stay healthy, but if he's healthy, he's better than the bottom tier. But Kenny Vaccaro is definitely better than the bottom tier. Maybe those are just bold, not terrible enough. But okay, there's two things here, and you probably already see it. Jordan Poyer on the bottom tier is ridiculous because he's a very, very good safety and all-around safety. He's a guy that you know he's going to give you everything: tackling, coverage, everything, range. Um, but the big problem is that logo that's right next to him. And it shows a Philadelphia Eagles logo next to him. And Jordan Porter plays for the Buffalo Bills. So maybe just, you know, graphics are very hard to make. I make a lot of them for these videos. And I, uh, you know, I double, I triple check them because I mess up like crazy at times. I spell things wrong. So it's kind of tough to kind of keep going through that stuff. But um, it, it had to make the cut. It had to make the cut. But uh, we'll, we'll take away the graphic error. Um Jordan Poyer is much better than you know just a starter, just starters, t bottom tier for this. Um, so that that was that was interesting. That's definitely an interesting one. So a lot of good takes, well, good terrible takes this week. Appreciate you for sending them in. Uh, again, there was probably other people with some good ones. I'm getting sent a lot of these now, so hard to keep track. It's hard to keep track who sends me what first. So I apologize, uh, but we're gonna keep doing this every Tuesday leading up to the NFL season. So. Go to, go to our Twitter. There's a link down below. It's at Godell's NFL. If you tweet at me, I pref that's the way I prefer over DMing, but either either way. Uh, and then you can, if you find any, get the screenshots, and then we you can make the cut next week. Full NFL content here. Please check it out. Subscribe to both channels. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.